Hi, everybody, wherever you may be. My name is Larry. My call sign is Kilo 7 Hotel November. I'd like to welcome you back to my shack here in the Northwest. This is Ham Radio Live Show 65. This will be a good one. We're going to cover a lot of the general exam questions for folks that would like to license up. So get ready. Going to be some questions, and I'll show you some explanations of things to try and help explain them better. There's a lot of people that might be confused about some of these things, and I try to do my best to help you guys get this thing done. Want you to license up or at least get your ham radio license. Now, keep in mind, I'm going to ask you to please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. I do not monetize this channel. I got to tell you, one thing I hate about some YouTube videos is all the ads. I don't like it. it drives me nuts. Um, this is my way of giving back. I've been blessed to have AM radio to get my license. I don't have the greatest house and all the greatest stuff, but I have food in the cupboard and the fridge and freezer, and I'm grateful for that. This is my way of giving back. That's why I don't put ads on this station. No ads on this YouTube channel at all. But I do ask if you'd be kind enough to please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. That will make me so happy and it'll make things better. So let's go over the exam questions for the general. We'll see about making some QSOs. Good one yesterday with Whiskey 4 Radio November. Wow, what a guy. I loved Mike. Man, used to be the vice president of NBC. Think about that. That's pretty cool stuff. All right, first question for the general exam in the United States. What must you do if an evaluation of your station shows RF for hams that want to be hams? These were, we'll call you, we'll call you future hams, okay? People that aren't yet ham radio operators but would like to be. RF means radio frequency, okay? So what must you do if an evaluation of your station shows radio frequency energy radiated from your station exceeds permissible limits? The answers given on these are the exact same answers that you find on the test. Everything's worded exactly the same on the U.S. test. A, take action to prevent human exposure to the excessive RF field. So, you know, do something to make sure that the radio frequency fields aren't hurting other people. B, file an environmental impact statement, EIS 97, with the FCC. C, Secure written permission from your neighbors to operate above the controlled maximum exposure limits. D, all of these choices are correct. The answer is A, you want to take action to prevent human exposure to the excessive radio frequency fields. This is, so much of this can be accomplished by making sure you have a good station ground, first of all. That's important. Good lightning protection as well. A good ground for your antenna and for your station makes a huge difference. Truly, it does. So, please, if you're having an RF issue, a lot of it can be tied to your ground. Make sure you're grounding properly, okay? Very important. Question number two on the current general exam for today. When general class licensees are not permitted to use the entire voice portion of a particular band, which portion of the voice segment is generally available to them? Now, this is a big deal. My father-in-law, Bill, can attest to this because he was a technician for a while. And it drove him crazy because he just, you know, couldn't use his microphone on anything but 10 and 6 and 2 meters and 70 centimeters and up, right? So he wanted to be able to make contacts on the air. This is important to him and important to me, too, because I want to make contact with him. So... General class licensees don't have the same privileges as an amateur extra does. They just have a little bit fewer frequencies. Keep in mind, though, you get about 97% of the frequencies, so it's not a huge difference. So in this question, the answers given are, A, the lower frequency end. So if you take a look at the band, then the general class licensees would get the lower part of that band, B, the upper frequency end, C, the lower frequency end on frequencies below 7.3 megahertz, and the upper end on frequencies above 14.150 megahertz. D, the upper frequency end on frequencies below 7.3 megahertz, and the lower end on frequencies above 14.150 megahertz. 
The answer is A. You always get the upper frequency end on the general license, okay? So the lower part of like 40 and 20 meters, 80 meters, those are all reserved for extra, for extras only, okay? For example, on 80 meters, you can talk with a microphone from 3.6 megahertz to 4. General, you go from 3.7 megahertz to 4. See, that 100 kilohertz is there for the extras. And, you know, it's really negligible. I mean, we use whatever's available, to be honest. 70 meters, you'll find that extras can talk from 7.125 to 7.3. Generals, you guys are right at 7.175. So you lose... 50 kilohertz. That's it. Don't lose a whole lot there. Okay. On 40 meters, generals get from 14,225 to 14,350. Okay. If you're an extra, you get 14,150 to 14,350. So 75 kilohertz you lose with a general license. But again, it's not a whole bunch. On 17, generals get the entire band. 15, generals get most of it. You get from 21,275 all the way to 21,450. The extras get 21,2 to 21,450. So 75 kilohertz. From there, it's equal. Okay. 12 meters, same exact privileges as an extra. 10 meters, same exact privileges as as an extra. Same with six and two and on we go. So really that's it. And one of the things that's really important here, my friends, when you're on 160, if you're doing top band, okay, so 1.8 kilohertz up to two kilohertz, sorry, kilohertz, megahertz. When you're working 1.8 megahertz to two megahertz, generals get the entire portion. Yeah, the entire portion to work with and that's really cool. So keep in mind, the voice portion really for the 1.8 megahertz band, it's kind of around 18.175. I'm sorry, 18.75, I guess it is. And then it goes up to two. So that frequency, about 125 kilohertz, is great because everybody can use it, even generals, same thing. So there you go. Just it's a little bit, it's always in the lower end that you lose frequency, okay, for every band, you know, that's affected by it, but not all bands, keeping that in mind, okay? Good thing to do is to get the ARRL U.S. Amateur Radio Bands Sheet. You can buy them from ARRL. They're not that expensive. Get it laminated, put it on your shack wall. It's easy to have. Most hams have them, okay? Next question, when general class licensees are not permitted to use the, whoops, we already did this one. I don't know why it popped back up again. I'm sorry. Let's go to the next question finally, I hope. (laughs) Okay. Which of the following must be true before amateur stations may provide communications to broadcasters for dissemination to the public? Now, what does this mean? Which of the following must be true, again, Amateur stations providing content, basically, for broadcasters. This is like for commercial broadcasters, okay? Think of it that way, okay? That's a good way to look at it. A, the communications must directly relate to the immediate safety of human life or protection of property, and there must be no other means of communication reasonably available before or at the time of the event, okay? That's A. B, the communication must be approved by a local emergency preparedness official and conducted on officially designated frequencies. C, the FCC must have a declared state of emergency. No. D, all of these choices are correct. Okay, it's A. They just must relate to human life, protection of property, and... Basically, what it means, this is a great example of like when you have a hurricane, okay, and the power goes out everywhere. You can't get reporters into the field because the storm is way too bad. But you've got a ham radio. you got a generator. You're on the air. You're helping to make contact and keep people informed. 
this is a great you know point of when something like this is used so again with this question it really relates to make sure that it sticks to the protection of human life protection of property and their cannot be any other means of communication reasonably available before or at the time of the event. That's how you can give your stuff to broadcasters, okay? Next question on the general exam today. We're going to hit quite a few of them, okay? Which of the following statements is true of the single sideband voice mode? This is really important. A lot of people struggle with sideband, okay? And even I've said it wrong here. I'm guilty. I've, I've made a mistake on this. My apologies, because I know it, but I said it the wrong way. Please forgive me for that. A, only one segment and, this, and the carrier are transmitted. The other sideband is suppressed. B, only one sideband is transmitted. The other sideband and carrier are suppressed. C, SSB is the only voice mode that is authorized on the 20-meter 15 meter and 10 meter amateur bands or D single sideband is the only voice mode that is authorized on the 160 meter 75 meter and 45 meter bands. Okay. This is where things get confusing for some hams and, or, or wannabe hams. Okay. This is where it works. And I think Honestly, it's one of those things that can be very confusing for people because they don't understand how frequencies work, you know, how we transmit, how, for example, an AM radio transmitter may transmit over their car radio, okay, or their home radio, or how a, let's say, um, let's say it's a... FM station and something like that. We even, let's even go into... HD, that'd be kind of cool. We'll, we'll show you a little bit of HD as well because there's a lot here that goes into what goes into your signals. And it's important for me to explain to them because some of these things can be exceptionally confusing to wannabe hams and even hams that are new. Okay, upper side bend, lower side bend, all that stuff. What the heck are we talking about, right? Answer is B, only one side bend is transmitted. The other sideband, and here's the big deal, the other sideband and carrier, the carrier is suppressed. Okay. Think of a radio signal like a bologna sandwich. Simple, right? I like to use things that are simple because I can understand them. Okay. The bologna represents the carrier. This is like on a typical AM broadcast, okay? The bread represents the sidebands. All right. On one side of the bread is the sideband for upper or for lower, okay? So, in essence, you're going to have one upper, one lower. It kind of works that way, okay? Let me show you a diagram a little bit here, okay? It's, it's a little bit difficult to see, but it helps to understand a little bit here, okay? In fact, I don't like how this one turned out. This one looks awful. My goodness, it's like an x-ray. Not good. Not good. We'll try a different one. And it's the same. Okay. We'll move to a different one because I do have some other ones here that we can help you with, hopefully. Because I do want this to be understandable because it can be confusing for people. All right. This is better. This actually, this is HD. Here's HD and uh, gives you an idea, but we will get to the main point. HD signals work this way. Now, if you have a car that picks up HD, like HD FM, right? Even AM can do HD. You have right in the center where it says zero kilohertz, okay? See where that is? Okay, right. Let me see if I can point down to it here. If I can get get my fingers in here to kind of help guide you just a skosh. Okay, it's right there. See my finger? Zero kilohertz. All right. You have 10 frequency partitions. That's the main signal. Okay. But the secondary signal goes out farther. On HD broadcast, you have 400 kilohertz available to you. On FM, you have 200. On AM, you get 100. That's it. But 
not excuse me, so I think it's 75 mil. Let me get to the diagram I have for that because I want to give you a good view of this. Hang on, please. All right, there we go. There, finally. Ah. All right. Amplitude modulation. It shows, you know, the, this is basically the progression of radio signals. It starts with AM. 10 kilohertz bandwidth. That's how much AM gets, 10 kilohertz. So if you've ever noticed, right, your radio goes, let's say, for example, 980 AM, then it goes 990 AM, then it goes 1000 AM, then 1010, and so on. It's 10 kilohertz wide. That's why you don't see stations right next to each other. They can't, they, they won't license them. Then we get the short wave spectrum. This is HF. Now we go to FM. FM starts right about 88 megahertz. In truth, it's right about 60, but that's okay. 50 megahertz, actually 50. So right about 50 megahertz up, they've got FM. And then we get into the VHF frequencies. Now on FM, as you can see, 200 kilohertz bandwidth. If you've ever wondered why FM radio sounds so good, right? Stereo, uh-huh. You get stereo with it. Plus, it sounds better for radio, you know, for your, your, your music. That's why. They have 200 kilohertz to work with. That's a lot of bandwidth to be able to put basically all the stuff you want to put over the air. All that fidelity, in this case, for music. Now, on AM... It's only 10 kilohertz wide. That's why music doesn't sound as good on AM because it doesn't have a wide enough bandwidth to make the music sound real great. Now, back in the late 80s, they, they studied, and this is true, they studied using AM stereo and it flopped. It was horrid. It's something that not many people really liked. So there you go. Good to see you, my friend. Thank you, IQ Service and good man. That again is HD. HD is cool because it provides additional channels. You have your main station, then you have other stations that are sub channels. HD 400 kilohertz wide. So when you're talking about sideband, again, bologna sandwich, you've got three kilohertz here, sideband. 3 kilohertz here, sideband, and you have a center carrier frequency. When we're talking about upper or lower sideband, you lose the baloney and the other piece of bread. Best way to describe it. I hope that helps because when I try and do this, it's more about trying to help you understand in a practical way so it makes it easier to understand. At least that's my hope, okay? It's always my hope to help you. Let's see. Next question we've got here. This is, um, again, this is the question that we just had. The other sideband and the carrier. Keep in mind, carrier is suppressed. You do get the sideband, but the carrier is suppressed. Okay, next question on the current FCC general. What does the term zero beep mean in CW for new hams or future hams? CW means Morse code. So what does the term zero beat mean? mean in Morse code operation? A, matching the speed of the transmitting station. B, operating split to avoid interference on frequency. C, sending without error. Or D, matching your transmit frequency to the frequency of a received signal. And we'll get to the next question here in a second. All right, let me show you real quick. When you zero beat a CW signal, we'll show it to you, okay? So right now we're on 40. We're going to go down to the CW portion of the frequency band where we find the, this, the wonderful CW folks. Going to tune now to so CW. This is CW. Now, do me a favor. Take a look. Let me try and zoom this in. I always try and get this thing taped down for you. But take a look right here. This area here, where the P is, that's where you're going to zero beat it. So what we're going to do is we're going to tune this so actually that moving signal right here goes directly in the center. Then it will be zero beaded. Hopefully it'll start transmitting again. There we go.
So that's zero beating. You see how everything is staying right in the center here? That's, the, that's what zero beating means. So when you're zero beating on a short, on a short, sorry, on a Morse code signal, you're essentially tuning right directly on it. Okay? That's what it means. Hi, Vega. Good to see you. Thank you for being here today. It's a pleasure to meet you. Thanks for joining the show. All right. Next question on the FCC's general exam reads. Oh, wait a minute. You know, we had another one back here. Hold on. Forgot. I told you we would do the second one here. Okay. Second question says, what is QRP operation? Q codes can confuse folks. A, remote piloted remote control. B, low power transmit operation. C, transmission using quick response protocol. Or D, traffic relay procedure net operation. The answer is low power transmit operation. QRP is operating on low power intentionally, trying to see just how well your antennas and your radio will work together with your feed line to get you a great signal out there. Now, I love QRP. QRP is a challenge. Challenges are fun. I think the farthest I've worked QRP is from California to Kansas. It was like 2,100 miles on 5 watts. And that's off of a little G5RV junior antenna that my father-in-law has, who's Kilo November 6, India Ocean Papa. That little antenna that's right by his beautiful palm trees. Dad, don't take him down by his pool. And (laughs) this little G5RV junior at 20 feet. Five watts all the way to Kansas. That's QRP. It's pretty neat to use. I love QRP. It's a challenge. We'll have to do a QRP show again. We've done one before. Now, this is kind of messed up in the way that it's printed, but I'll explain. What segment of the 80-meter band is most commonly used for digital transmission? A, 3570 to 3600 kilohertz. B, 3500 to 3525 kilohertz. C, 3700 to 3750 megahertz, sorry, kilohertz. Or D, 3775 kilohertz to 3825 kilohertz. Okay. Now, you see they're using the term kilohertz here, which is accurate, okay? If you want to convert this to megahertz, remember, if you're a future ham, you just put a decimal point after the first number. That's it. Then you've got megahertz. So, the answer is A, 3.57 megahertz, okay? Okay. So at 3.570 megahertz to 3.6 megahertz, you have the area where digital transmissions exist. What do those look like? That's FT8. Those are things like JT65, um, Hellschreiber, Thor, all these digital modes that basically computers control. It's pretty neat stuff. So servicing IQ during a solar event, cloudy day. Is it? You know, I don't know. I haven't looked lately. I haven't looked today at this. I can tell you it's raining like crazy here today. And then the sun comes out. We have some bipolar weather here today. Not sure what's wrong. Anyway, I hope you're having a good day, my friend. All right, next one. Which of the following could be a cause of interference covering a wide range of frequencies? I know this one so well because I had to survive the water pump from you know where. Okay. A, not using a ballon or line isolator to feed balanced antennas. B, lack of, re- I'm sorry, ra- lack of rectification of the transmitter's signal in power conductors. C, arcing at a poor electrical connection. Or D, using a ballon to feed an unbalanced antenna. Well, you're going to use a ballon to feed an unbalanced antenna. You have to, unless you're using it through a tuner that can take an unbalanced line. Okay, but the answer is C, arcing in a poor electrical connection. That's what causes interference. Really, it's RFI, radio frequency interference, often caused by arcing of a transformer somewhere near you. In my case, it was a waterfall volume pump controller by my neighbor's waterfall pond next door. Simple thing, all things. I sent the power company out because I knew it wasn't a home issue, I wanted to check our power box out front. Nope, wasn't that. It was a little pump about oh, five inches long, three inches high, and maybe three inches deep. That thing literally was able to be heard a block away, causing 
RFI on every frequency from AM all the way up to 60 megahertz. Next question on the FCC test. Almost done. Next one. Which of the following causes opposition to the flow of alternating current in a capacitor? It is reactants. Reactants is the opposition of alternating current in a capacitor. Best way to describe it, okay? We're not going to go too deep into this. some of these. I'm going to try and get these out of the way. Which of the following is the advantage of using the binary system when using digital signals? This is important for things like FT8, JT65, all of these digital modes. They're digital, so they're represented by ones and zeros. That's it. They're a code of ones and zeros. So the answer is A. Binary ones and zeros are easy to represent by on or off states. Remember that when you're using binary code, it means digital. Digital is ones and zeros. Keep that in mind. Binary ones and zeros. You'll be golden. That's the best way to remember, okay? Little trick. Okay. Last one. What's the primary purpose of antenna traps? It's to permit multi-band operation. If you have a dipole, for example, let me see if I can get you the picture of it, hopefully. I've got little tiny pictures I'm looking at. If you have a dipole, that's not it. If you have a little dipole up there and you've got some antenna traps, say you're working multiple frequencies, right? Okay, we're getting all stuff, all kinds of stuff on here that really isn't what I thought it would be. Anyway, if you're using something like an antenna trap to, you know, work different frequencies, say it's 20 and 40 and 80 and, you know, all of that, there's little traps between the antenna to help keep on that frequency so it's not going to drift away. Traps help multiband verticals and dipoles to be able to work on different frequencies. That's what they do. Also, another question that came up on the test, <clears throat> excuse me, that um, talked about electronic keyers, okay? An electronic keyer is something that is basically a Morse code keyer. Um, some older radios didn't have electronic keyers built in. The ones today all do. They're just simple. They're pretty easy to use. But there are products out there, if your radio doesn't have one, that you can use that are very helpful to you. So if you like Morse code, you'd like to work. One of the cool things is ARRL has stations out there called W1AW. They teach Morse code. They help you get better at it, and they help you to do real well with your Morse code. So if you don't have, so you got an older radio and doesn't have a key to it, you know, a Morse code paddle key to insert. There are ways that you can add that keyer to your system. Now, there are optional items that come from different companies, or you can homebrew them. That's another thing. A lot of guys love to homebrew. Hams are home brewers. Homebrew means they're made from scratch. And hams are great at doing this. Let me show you one of those products that does it. Here's the MFJ Deluxe Electronic Gear. As you see, it's got some great stuff on it to help you to be able to work Morse code. It's got a volume control, speaker at the top, helps you with the tone, also gives you weight and speed. What does weight mean? Weight, for example, you're using your dits and daws, right? Dits and daws puts weight on those. So instead of just being like a it puts the weight. It's when the D part, it helps to add a little emphasis on those things. So adding weight to a Morse code call is important. It's helpful. Okay. So there you go. That's on Morse code gears. Let's move to the rig cam for goodness sakes. Even make some calls. I, boy, what a show yesterday having, uh, having, um, W4RN, all the way from Virginia. My goodness. Let's tune over to 14158. I have a feeling there might be somebody there. Let me just take a look, see if our frequency is available. It was earlier. Let's tune it. We'll see if we can get this going and hopefully see if we can make a call. Love to do that today on the show. Had a good show yesterday. Good couple of shows. I hope you enjoyed the one on shortwave. That's a fun one. And all the links to where I found those programs are in the description. 
Is this frequency available? This is Kilo 7 Hotel November. Checking frequency availability. This is Kilo 7 Hotel November. Always check to make sure your frequency is open. That's most important. I usually go down to 2700 kilohertz. I do that for 2700 hertz. The reason I do it is because that's getting a little bit rid of some of the noise I might get. Let's make a call. CQ, CQ 20. This is Kilo 7 Hotel November. Kilowatt 7 Hotel November calling CQ. CQ, CQ 20 meters from the Pacific Northwest of Oregon and live on Ham Radio Live. This is Kilo 7 Hotel November calling CQ and listening. anything coming back we'll try once more cq cq 20 meters live on ham radio live on youtube this is kilowatt 7 hotel november kilo 7 hotel november calling cq 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 any station anywhere live on ham radio live on youtube this is kilowatt 7 hotel november kilo 7 hotel november Calling CQ on 20 and listening. All right. Not there. Let's try and go up to. Well, actually, we got a signal up here. We can try and see if we can work this one. Let's go over here. Sounds like a CQ call. Boy. Just a nasty carrier. There's a big one. No, you're screaming in here. Now you're 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 about ten to fifteen over S nine into Boulder, Colorado, bud. The name is Don. We've chatted many times in the past, um, uh, including once in person back at a Dayton Ham Fest many many years ago. So uh, uh, good to hear you. Yeah, as usual, you're screaming in here with your. Uh, you got your hex beam going. Now, are you running the 100 watts? Now, I'm going to tune. We'll see if we can step in and say hello to these folks. And I do notice we're only getting one channel out of the audio here. I'm not sure why. We'll be checking into that one. Kilo 7, Hotel November. Yeah, well, you can turn it off because, uh, boy, you're you're going anywhere from an S9 to 20 over. Okay, and you're just uh, still a little over S9 on that over. All right, very good. You probably got people standing in line to talk to you <laughs> as usual, but I, I'm not used to hearing you on 20. I'm used to you used to hearing you on 17. Uh, enjoy your day out there uh, here in Boulder. We've got uh, no smoke for a change. We had some uh, had some snow the other day. And uh, the fires are, are down a little bit. And uh, today is 65 degrees and blue sky for the first time in a while. Uh, W3FF, KR0E. Kilo 7 Hotel November for a quick one. Yeah, I'm running the Flex 5000. Flex 5000 with, uh, with an uh, um, expert 1.5 KA behind it. Three element stepper Yagi at 45 feet. Yeah, I, you know what servicing IQ, I like it. Love the idea. Love the idea. But, you know, what we try and do is show the actual live ham radio live. This is it. Without making CQ calls that are already pre-ranged. Some people do that. And that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. This would be like if you grabbed your rig, turned it on, and tried to do it. So, people who might want to be hams, great way to show them. 
I think we're gonna move. Let's try our favorite band, Scope 17. Go to 40. Make some CQ calls. Usually, you got folks who monitor 17 because 17 is a great daytime frequency. Currently on the East Coast, approaching 5 o'clock, so there's still light there. It should work. Great, great question, IQ. I love it. That's a good point. And it is neat if you have a prearranged show. We'll try one of those, see how it goes, okay? Is this frequency available? This is Kilo 7 Hotel November. Checking frequency availability, Kilo 7, Hotel November. Gonna open up the bandwidth a little. Let's call a CQ. CQ, CQ on 17. Live on Ham Radio Live. This is Kilowatt 7, Hotel November. Kilo 7, Hotel November. Calling CQ. CQ, CQ. Any station, anywhere. We're live streaming right now on YouTube on Ham Radio Live. This is Kilo 7 Hotel November calling CQ and listening. Yesterday we had the question about atmospheric noise. This is it. That's just natural atmospheric noise. Let's try again. CQ, CQ, 17, Kilo 7, Hotel November, Kilowatt 7, Hotel November, calling CQ. CQ, CQ, live on Ham Radio Live on YouTube. This is Kilo 7, Hotel November, Kilo 7, Hotel November, calling CQ on 17 and standing by. Seventeen's pretty slow. Pretty slow today. We'll try 40. 40 is the band that is always happily working. So, you know, 40 meters is kind of the bread and butter of ham radio. For, for folks who are future hams, 40 meters works in bad solar conditions or good solar conditions, usually, meaning the solar cycle. It's a great frequency, and most people love it because you can use it during the daytime, get some decent distance at night. You can scream out to the world really well on it. Let's see what we do. I have a patch of RFI right there. week. Another patch of RFI here, right through there. Digital mode. Bands are pretty slow today. Doesn't mean they're dead. Just means that people aren't on them. That's all. Go back to 20. Perfect. That is, trying to contact the station that ends in each and every letter of the alphabet while using up all the digits to zero through nine. CQ, 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 calling CQ. This is Colorado Station Whiskey Delta One Whiskey calling CQ. I'm working on my alphabet and number quest. You could be part of that. CQ, 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 calling CQ from the state of Colorado. Fast CQ. Great call, sir. Kilo 7, Hotel November. Good afternoon. Kilo 96, Whiskey November Uniform. Do I have you heard a minute? That's Kilo, clearly. See, that's, that's a weird way to respond to a CQ. That's a person that just starts taking the CQ call like it's his instead of waiting for the guy to respond. Not something you typically see. 
thankfully. I'm not going to play those games. Tune again. Make sure we're good on 14250, and we'll see how it goes. See, that was a weird response. You know, some folks will use CQ calls, and then they'll start talking back like they've already got the call. Uh, not good practice. Last weekend, we tried a 40 through 10 meter, 66 foot. Ernest is back. Hey, bud. Whiskey 3. Love your call sign, by the way. Whiskey 3, Germany, and, uh, Union, Yankee. Great calls. And you're welcome. This is my pleasure. Again, we don't monetize the show. Hang on. We don't monetize the channel. We just ask you to subscribe and hit the bell icon. Tell others about it because we're here to make a difference for folks to try and get into ham radio, but also those that have ham radios to enjoy a little time on the air. And I'd love to make a call with you. So... Anyone on frequency, I'm currently at 14.250, but there is a QSO going on, so just a moment. A lot of activity right here. Tons of it. I mean, tons of it. Let's do this. We'll go to 60. I have a good feeling about this one. I think we're going to go with CQs. We're going to, because people are listening, excuse me, and they're there. So we're going to do some CQ on 20. Is this frequency available? This is kilowatt 7 Hotel November. Checking frequency availability. This is kilo 7 Hotel November. By the way, big news coming. Big news coming on a great antenna and a great mast on the way. CQ, 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 Kilo 7 Hotel November, Kilowatt 7 Hotel November calling CQ. CQ 20 meters. This is Kilo 7 Hotel November live on YouTube's Ham Radio Live calling CQ to any station, anywhere, and listening. You try and go to where you see other people at that are making contacts and you call somewhere nearby. Usually works. CQ, CQ, 20. This is Kilo 7 Hotel November. Kilo 7 Hotel November calling CQ. CQ, CQ on 20 meters. This is Kilowatt 7 Hotel November. Kilo 7 Hotel November calling CQ. CQ, CQ, live streaming right now on Ham Radio Live on YouTube. This is Kilo 7, Hotel November, calling CQ and listening. CQ, CQ, 20, this is Kilo 7, Hotel November, Kilowatt 7, Hotel November, calling CQ. CQ, CQ, live on Ham Radio Live on YouTube. This is Kilo 7, Hotel November. Kilo 7, Hotel November, calling CQ, CQ, to any station, anywhere, and listening. My goodness gracious. Go one more time. CQ, CQ, Kilo 7 Hotel November, Kilo 7 Hotel November, calling CQ. CQ, CQ, we are live streaming on live uh, ham radio live on YouTube. We'd love to have you for a QSO. This is Kilo 7 Hotel November, Kilo 7 Hotel November, calling CQ to any station, anywhere, and listening. Right, Canada's in the house. Hello, Victor Alpha Three, Foxtrot Union Charlie. Welcome. 
we got a nice house here today. Had one yesterday too. Had folks from East Germany. We had well, folks from Germany. We had uh, what was it? We had folks from Germany. We had uh, Great Britain. That was a joy. What a treat yesterday was. And we talked to somebody who was the former vice president of NBC. Talk about cool. Down and then the game came back up again. Sounds like so, New England uh, or the right East Coast. On the, on the money on that, if, if it's a potentiometer, it probably needs a little bit more spray. Over. Kilo Seven Hotel November. Good practice is to wait. You get a break in the conversation, then you wait. We're only hearing one side of it here, so that's where it goes. Oh, 45 minutes into this. Wow. Hey, Roger, well, give a little bit of that. So, uh, came with uh, MC50 microphone as well, so I'm speaking pretty close to it, probably too close to... Uh, okay, so uh, it, it sounds a lot better than it did, obviously, so... Uh, you're on the right track there, uh, Mark. Um, Great audio. I noticed on your transmission, looking at the signal on the scope, uh, uh, your IMD, uh, and the, uh, your mixing products from your uh, auto or... See, this is a solid 5.9 signal. Uh, Great so audio, thing. too. Well, you might have been hit it too hard with audio and, and compression, I'm not sure. And just a little bit overdrive on the audio stage, and that kind of fixed things a little bit better. Uh, N5KAE, K8NY, over. Kilo 7, Hotel November for a quick one. This is where just listening, you know, just listening helps. And good news coming, big news to the channel. Let's make a huge difference. Look. Folks, we're doing this, just to understand, basically on the ASU 101 MP. So this is the new FTDX 101 MP. Great radio. Love the radio. Truly. 20-meter <laughs> open. It is open. It's just a matter of making some contacts today. But there is some interesting information I'd like to share with you. See, here's the rig. All right. I know I haven't taken off the plastic. You know... I don't get new stuff very often. This is pretty unique for me, and I just want to keep it nice. Yeah, um, uh, I need to reboot my system here anyway. I lost. Uh, I bet he's running a flex. He sounds uh, real good. Features here, I want to. It'll come back on reboot. Okay, well, uh, I'll let you continue on. Have a good one, Mark. Uh, good job there. Catch you. Again. So we're losing him, and we're running long on the on the show. I'll show you a few things on the rig that's kind of cool. Go back to the rig cam for the FTDX 101. It is well known that it has a 3D scope. Here it is. Now, I'm not really into this scope. For me, I'd rather use the waterfall. You know, I mean, it has lots of different options you can do. You can use multiples. So now you see... The 3D waterfall on uh, one, 20. Two, three, four. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, this is K8NY. Uh, K8NY. Flow one, two, three, four from K8NY. Yeah, there we go. Okay, not too good there. K8NY. Oh, eight, November Yankee. Uh, K8NY. Uh, K8NY standing by for any call. Kilo 8, November, Yankee. Kilo 7, Hotel November for a quick one. Go outside the base. Kilo 7, Hotel November. Q, very big signal there, uh, Glenn. Oh. Uh, gosh, you're 20 over 9. We've worked before. Name is Bob. QTH, West Virginia. Over. Okay, well, folks, we're going to just show you a few things on the FTDX 101. So you can see, you can do a lot of things with it you've got of course up top here the the 3d scope you've got your audio waveform which is right over here this section right here is your audio waveform try and move you over a little more so you can see it all right and then your incoming 
band is right here. So it'll tell you essentially how wide the transmission is on the signal coming in. It's really handy to use. I don't use it a lot, but you know, I very rarely use 3D, but I do use it in 2D this way. It's kind of nice to have all those features. It's decent. Yeah, not bad. Now, big news coming to the channel, which will help huge, huge with running QSOs. It's going to be very easy shortly, okay? We have the brand new MFJ1848. That's a hex beam. Now, the big deal about this one, it's brand new. It includes 30 and 40 meters. That's here. It's being assembled. I'm going to do a video on assembly and how it goes together. Then we'll show a video of it being installed. It'll be up at about 40 feet. I can't get it any, really any higher because of the rules of my area. We also have an amplifier coming, okay? So it'll be at least at one kilowatt. We've been at 200 watts for a while, which isn't bad. You know, you can make a lot with 100 watts. Heck, we can do good with five watts. But the point is, help is on the way to make our signal boom like what you just heard out of West Virginia. And we can direct it with the directional antenna with the MFJ 814.8. Man, the 1848 is a heck of an antenna. And here's the good news. A lot of folks run dipoles and verticals and they're thinking, gosh, I get a tower and a rotator and a huge thrust bearing and all that to make myself a directional beam. No, you don't. It's not going to cost you $10,000 to do this. You can do this for about $1,500. No joke. For a directional beam, probably about, I think it's about 8 dB gain, okay? About 90 degrees as you turn it. So you're going to get about 90 degrees of the band edges, so forth, where you're, where you're transmitting. And you're going to send your signal out that 90 degrees only. That's going to be great. Then you add it to about one kilowatt or 1,200 watts, depending upon the amplifier I get. That's going to make a tremendous difference. Then we're going to get QSO after QSO after QSO after QSO. So, but the point is, on that antenna, this is big news. Folks, you can do this with a rotator and just get yourself a fiberglass mast or use PVC pipe. Simple. Put your rotator on it, wire the rotator up, set it up. You're rolling. That antenna right now retails about $750. Yeah, for directional, that will get you about 8 dB of gain. It's a great antenna. We're working on the build right now. Should that have that up, I think, here by late November? It's going to take a little bit of time because parts are hard to come by because of the coronavirus. They're very difficult to come by. So add the directional, big difference. Huge help to any station. You can do that under two grand i mean easily under two grand and that would give you a great rotator and that would be a solid mast you would be amazing amazing okay good thing from andrew and you blow out the qrp with the amp and i am not a fan of people who does that andrew you know i love qrp love it i do it a lot i love to do qrp Nothing wrong with it. It's very, very good stuff. But for this show, QSOs are important. And also, let's face it, when you're in a contest, having the ability to use that is very important as well. For me, that's important. I enjoy that. That's the way it works. Ernest, thank you very much. And by the way, Andrew, I love QRP as well. Love to do a QRP with you. I love that. Love QRP. In fact, before we go, let's try and do one just to see how well it might work. Yeah, the hex beam's going to be fun. Should add quite a bit to it here. So let's see. Hold on. Just got a uh, request from one of the people watching the show. Let's see if we can go on to 18118. Let's see if we can get him. Let's see if he's there. Hold on. Speaking of trying to get somebody that already, you know, a prearranged QSO, let's see. I'm good with that. We're tuning up. Let's go to the ring cam. We'll try one more time. This is on 17 meters, and we'll give it a shot. Is this frequency available? This is Kilo 7 Hotel November.
Hearing something, I think. Is this frequency available? Kilo 7, Hotel November. I guess not. Okay. CQ, CQ, Kilo 7, Hotel November. Kilo 7, Hotel November calling CQ. CQ, CQ, we are live on Ham Radio Live. This is Kilo 7, Hotel November. Kilowatt 7, Hotel November, calling CQ to any station, anywhere, and listening. One of our viewers, Ward, from Southern California, is trying 17, so we'll see if we can get him. If we can't, we'll close the show. CQ, CQ, Kilo 7, Hotel November, live on Ham Radio, live on YouTube, calling CQ to any station, anywhere. Kilo 7, Hotel November, Kilowatt 7, Hotel November, calling CQ and listening. All right, we got nothing there. Sorry, Ward, we tried. One more thing, I because I like what Andrew said. I love this. This is good also from Canada. Victor Alpha 3, Frank Union Charlie. Soon I'll be on the HF bands. I need to redo my test to get HF. Canadian tests are hard. I bet they are. You hang in there. With the coronavirus, it's tough. It really is. I get it. It can be very, very difficult. Andrew, we're going to try it. Let's go down to QRP. Because I'm a big fan of QRP. I, I love it. For me, QRP is a ball. When you can make a call at like 5 watts or 10 watts, that's cool. <laughs> I don't care where you are. We'll go up to 10. We'll go up to 10 because we, you know, yeah, why not? We'll go to 10 watts. And we'll see what happens, Andrew. I love it. Again, QRP is so stinking fun. I think we had somebody there. We're going to move. Let's go to 203. Excuse me, 203. We're going to tune again. I did. I think there was a call there that was at 210. We left it there. I don't want to call on top of them. So we are now at 14.203 megahertz. We're going to try at 10 watts. See what we get. Is this frequency available? This is Kilo 7, Hotel November. And you can tell the difference now in the watt meter. Yep, we're on a side bend. We're hitting somebody there. We're, we're disturbing a signal. We'll go down to 197. Okay, so over here, on this end here, I'm going to try and get the everything moved over so you can see it much clearer without the glare, you know? Just make it better. All right, so over here, you're going to see the power meter. It's going to hit right about 10. So we're only putting out 10 watts. Is this frequency available? This is Kilo 7 Hotel, November. Checking frequency availability, Kilo 7 Hotel, November, QRP. All right. Hems love picking up QRPs, by the way. We're going to try it, Andrew. CQ, CQ, this is Kilo 7, Hotel November. Kilo 7, Hotel November, working QRP, calling CQ. CQ, QRP, CQ, QRP, live on Ham Radio Live. This is Kilo 7, Hotel November, working QRP, calling CQ and listening. Wouldn't this be cool to make a call? I'd love that. Because like Andrew, I am a fan of QRP. CQ, CQ, this is Kilo 7 Hotel November calling CQ. CQ, CQ, running QRP, Kilo 7 Hotel November, Kilo 7 Hotel November calling CQ, QRP, Live on Ham Radio Live and listening. Try it one more time. 
CQ, CQ, Kilo 7 Hotel November running QRP, calling CQ. CQ, CQ, QRP, Kilo 7 Hotel November, Kilo 7 Hotel November, calling CQ, QRP, and listening. It's interesting. That's not a bad idea. We could try it. Thanks for the heads up. Good idea. All right. Seems like today's not the day. Just not the day. But again, keep in mind, help is on the way. And that's the cool part. We get some light back on me. That's why you see a little glare on the screen. So help is on the way. Directional beam is coming. By the way, with QRP. We are going to have a ball with that antenna because you can direct it right where you want to work. QRP, perfect. Love it. But I also love just using a wire and running QRP that way. It is so fun. Hey, thank you very much, Ernest. That's a very big compliment. Again, we do not, we do not monetize. You know, there's not a million subscribers here, but maybe someday there'll be a lot, but we're still not going to run ads because it's not about getting money. It's about helping people. Thanks for watching Am Radio Live. Sorry about no QSOs today, but I hope you had some help and we had some fun together. Until next time, God bless you. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye, everybody.